Welcome to Smarter Circuits. I'm your host, Ian Klein. First, I want to apologize for not doing this video sooner. 2021 went out much the same way it came in, kicking and screaming. Also, due to supply chain issues and economic conditions, I will likely be doing monthly videos rather than weekly, as this is a very device-heavy channel and devices aren't cheap. I will try to create content in between the regular episodes that isn't quite so costly, but I don't want to promise more than the minimum I feel I can deliver to my audience. Perhaps I'll do some code tutorials and some theory videos on things like Ohm's Law and such. With that out of the way, let's talk about relays. Again, and with fervor. You may have seen my previous videos, and if you have, you'll know that I like the Shelly line of IoT relays for their price point and reliability. I'd like to point out that Shelly does not sponsor me or even know I exist, more than likely. I would love it if they did know I existed, and even more if they did sponsor the channel, but they don't. So when I tell you that I really like these Relay products, I'm being 100% earnest with you. Likewise, when I tell you the door and window sensors aren't worth the plastic they've wasted on them, I am also being 100% earnest about that too. There's another YouTuber that has done an absolutely fascinating and tedious comparison of door window sensors from various manufacturers, including Shelly, and if I can get a hold of him and his permission, I'll link his video on the subject below or put a card up right about here. I digress a lot. Back to the relays. I have done videos on the Shelly 1PM and Shelly 2.5 units before, and they're really nice little relays, but Shelly released a new product last year that takes things to a whole new level in my opinion. This is the Shelly Pro 4PM relay. It's a beast, with a 16 amp max rating per channel, 40 amp peak across all four channels, it can easily replace any existing Shelly 1PM or 2.5s you may have installed already, as well as any old solenoid relays you may be dealing with. And there's the card for the video explaining that situation if you're interested. Like the Shelly 1PM and 2.5, you can enable a variety of things, including Shelly's own cloud service on the device. But it is optional, and this is the bit I like, which means cloudless automation through MQTT. Also, like the previous models, there's a handy, well-built web interface you can use to configure the device. It has temperature sensors and overload protection, and it mounts on a DIN rail if you're into that sort of thing. Now, here's the fun part. This model comes with an Ethernet port, so if you find you've purchased Netgear Wi-Fi extenders because you had a momentary lapse of reason or were exceedingly drunk while architecting your network, you can eliminate the Wi-Fi altogether for a more reliable connection. There's also this little transparent bit here that is obviously a cool little status screen, and you've got these buttons that allow you to simply configure the device from, well, the device. I have not actually tested this module at all prior to writing this video, so I hope I didn't get a dud and that everything I said so far works the way it is supposed to, or this is going to get interesting in ways I did not script dialogue for. As with most of Shelley's products, the device is clearly marked with things you should probably understand before you go goofing with your electrical system, but I'll explain them as we go anyway. Let's start by wiring up the device, and we'll see where we wind up. Here we have our Shelley Pro 4PM relay with the schematics on the side, so you can see how to hook it up. And all you do is hook your neutral up down here on the bottom like you would any other. Here are your switch inputs, uh, which we won't be using. And then up here, you just simply run the line into each of the uh, relays next to the outputs for the various devices. And that's pretty much it. As you can see, you have the three buttons below the screen here for navigating the menu. And it's a pretty solid little device. And as you can see, these caps just come right off here, exposing the screw terminals that we use to wire up the device. And now let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, so first thing that we'll do here is we will lock down our neutral wire into the neutral wire terminal. Make sure you get this snug, but you don't have to destroy the device. Move this ground wire out of the way. And now we'll grab a few smaller wire lengths to distribute the load wire to the four relays. Okay, I'm going to trim a little bit of wire off of the hot lead here. Uh, this is temporary just for testing, so I'm just going to wire nut all of these together into uh, like a 
like a little squid thing that I can just connect to the terminals. So I'm just going to wrap these wires up here. And I'm not doing this in any sort of wonderful or professional way. I'm just kind of getting the job done. Uh, generally speaking, you'd probably use solid core wire here. This is just what I use when I'm doing my testing. It's not awful to use braided wire in low current uh, or, or low draw situations, but solid core is generally better, provided it doesn't move around. Which, if you're putting this thing on something that moves around, you're probably, you know, versed enough in this to not do the dangerous thing. So I'll just put the wire nut on here, and then I will lock the... Uh, hot wires into the screw terminals. Okay, now that we have our hot wires installed and we've capped our ground wire so we don't accidentally tap it against anything, uh, keep in mind that your ground wire at the box, at your mains box, is connected to the neutral, so there can be some voltage there, uh, don't, uh, or current. Don't, don't just leave your ground wire exposed. All right, so let's go ahead and power this thing on and we'll take a look at our interface. Now, this is the first time that I have seen this, so I'm pretty excited. I immediately see the status of all four relays, which is really cool. I'll just roll through the switch states here and you can see that I can turn them on and off and they will show the voltage state uh, or current state in use. Of course, we don't have anything connected to this, so they'll just read zero. As you can see, there is a menu system in here that allows me to set up network settings, turn on and off you know, the Wi-Fi access point, the Bluetooth, and so on. Uh, there is a status screen that allows me to see the ad hoc network that's on, if it is on, or what the... Uh, Wi-Fi looks like that it's connected to, along with the IP address. Very useful. Very cool little device. Upon turning the device on, you can see there's a really nice menu system and the web interface is quite nice, as usual with Shelly devices. Here is the web interface on mobile, and as you can see, there's a place to set up your Wi-Fi as well as a secondary Wi-Fi connection to fail over to. I discovered you can also leave the ad hoc Wi-Fi enabled and use it from other devices as well. I'll be setting this up with my Raspberry Pis to create a redundantly redundant redundancy in my network. Perhaps I'll do a video on this later. I'd like to add here that after taking this initial video and these initial screenshots of the interface, I went ahead and ran a firmware update. When I rebooted the device, I was delighted to find that the device now has a few more configuration settings as well as the ability to add scripts in a modified MJS format. Documentation on this is linked in the description and I will undoubtedly be playing with this more and doing another video on what kinds of tricks I can get this thing to do. Also, while researching this, I realized that Shelly has created a 1 and 2 relay version of this Pro series that is now on pre-order. So I pre-ordered some because I obviously have an addiction to clicky electronic devices. It doesn't appear to have changed the on-screen interface on the 4PM, but that's alright because it's already pretty good, honestly. I'm really impressed with this device so far, as I have been with all of Shelly's relay modules so far, and I am looking forward to seeing what I can build with it, as well as replacing some of my older 1PM and 2.5 modules, which will likely find new homes in even more strange applications I'll cover in other videos.